Howdy guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game War Rift, an interactive deck building experience by Josiah and Benjamin Petri. It plays one to five players, is for ages 12 and up, and takes about 15 minutes per player. And in this interactive deck building game, you are going to be playing a deck builder of sorts. You will choose a guild, and that guild is going to have a specific set of cards. And you're going to start with a certain number of cards, 10 to be exact, in your deck. You'll shuffle, you'll deal out five, and then you'll play a normal deck builder, in which case you're going to be drawing cards, utilizing them for either their value in currency and or their value in attack. You'll be defeating monsters that are going to come out of the maw. These are crazy non-human beings that you'll need to defeat because if you don't, you'll get overrun and you could be eliminated. And you'll also be attempting to buy cards from your guild. Now, if you're able to purchase them at the highest cost, you'll get to keep those cards and put them into your deck for later use. And if not, they're going to go into the rift here and uh, then players are going to randomly be getting them and then you'll be playing those cards. So you might get other cards from other guilds and then when those cards get played, they'll go back to their respective owners. Your objective in the game is to stay alive as long as possible while other players get overrun and you're also going to be attempting to gather victory points. The victory points are listed on each of these cards in the Ma. Uh, basically each of the different villains will have a certain number of points and when a certain point total is triggered more monsters will come out and then when the final point total is triggered that'll give everybody else a round of play and whoever has the most points that is still remaining is the winner of the game. There's multiple modes. You have a solo variant, you have a one versus uh, everybody else who's also against each other variant and then there's the of course, the casual and standard play. I'll show you the basic components of the game, how it's uh, played in one of the modes, and then we'll come up and discuss my review for the game War Rift, uh, an interactive deck building experience. Welcome to the game War Rift, and we're going to be explaining the classical mode of the game. I have a two player setup here with the Gravebrand and the Nightfang guilds set up, as well as, of course, I have the Maw and the Necropolis, and of course, the Rift here to show you how the game works. Uh, when you start the game off, determine the number of players. And if you're playing with more than four players, a fifth player, they can be playing as the Demon Master. But if not, you can go ahead and set that aside and just play the classical mode, which we'll be talking about mainly in this game. Uh, each specific player is going to get a deck of cards based on their faction, which is going to have all their unique colored cards, as well as their guild card, their special guild power, and their deck of 10 cards. You'll basically take out the 10 cards from the deck that are going to be rank one, which is in the top right hand corner with a little one symbol, and you'll shuffle that deck up until it is randomized and place it right on the deck space. Next to it is the discard pile. There's the power space to place your power of your guild. And also what's nice about this game too is there's multiple different powers you can choose from. This is where slain monsters go, which is where you'll get your points for the game. And then the rest of the cards will form your guild deck. You'll shuffle this up and deal out three cards here. Both players or all players will do this until their field looks something like this. Take the Maw cards, these are the monsters in the game, and go ahead and shuffle them up. There's a bunch of different variants as to how you can go ahead and set this up, but uh, for the basic mode, you'll just shuffle up randomly and set aside all the rest of the cards, including the lore cards and the Demon Master card, and then choose a player to begin the game by drawing a card randomly from the deck, looking at the value of the card, and then whoever has the highest will get to start. And we'll just go ahead and start with this player here. To begin the phase of the game, you'll simply first take a card uh, from the top of the Maw deck and place it out into the Maw. Then check to see if that monster has any abilities. Um, this one here has a death crash, meaning when it dies, it will perform a specific action. And you also check the card itself. Uh, this card here has a value of one and it has a health of one, which means if you defeat it by dealing one damage to it, it'll go into your graveyard and give you one point in the game. Depending on the amount of points you need to get in the game, maybe it's 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever it might be, will determine uh, when the game will end. Basically, when a person triggers that final point total, Total, the game ends and when it gets halfway if one player gets halfway they'll start putting out more than one mama ma monster onto the field they'll start putting out two of them where everybody else who's not halfway will simply put out one and that player the first player will go ahead and begin by drawing five cards from their deck now this is the middle phase in which that player is going to play any of the cards they have in their hand when they play them they can simply play them out at the top of their field just like so 
Uh, the top right hand side is your currency that you'll be utilizing. The blue is to buy cards and the orange is to do damage. So for instance, this warrior can go ahead and do one damage to this imp, thusly defeating it, putting it into the slain monster pile and invoking its death crash ability, which means it consumes the bottom card of your deck, consuming being removed from the game. So in this case, this card here would get removed from the game from this player. Uh, then he, he or she can go ahead and utilize the rest of its his or her currency. So he's got one, two, three, and four currency, meaning that he or she may buy any of these cards that has four or less. So if I wanted to buy the Vigilant Sigil or Sentinel, I would go ahead and spend the four. And then when I buy a card, if I buy it for its value, it's going to go here into the Rift. Um, after that, I have no more currency left. These are going to be discarded. If I wanted to buy the card and keep it, I would have to spend two more than its total cost, and it would go into my discard pile. But because I cannot, it'll go into the rift here. The rest of these cards will go into the discard pile. A new card is obviously going to fill in whenever you buy a card. And if you have nothing else left to do, you'll simply pass. And the next player will get a chance to go. After shuffling his or her deck, draw out those five cards here. Uh, place out one of these monsters here. And then begin the middle phase where you can go ahead and place all your cards out. And then spend them uh, to gain any benefits. And in this case, it's just five currency. So maybe he or she will buy this Seeker of Ends, placing it here, and that's all that he or she can do, discarding the rest into their discard pile. Now this monster was not defeated, so it will stay there. Uh, basically, you can choose at the beginning of the game a difficulty meter. Maybe it's 7 or 9 or 15. Whatever that meter is going to be will determine how many monsters can be in the Maw at any one given point in time. And if at the end of a player's turn there is that amount or more in the Maw, then that player will be eliminated from the game. So you'll need to defeat defeat these cooperatively in order for you and your opponents to not be removed from the game. At the end of the round, which is when every single player has played and then drawn back up to five cards, uh, you're going to go ahead and check this rift area here. Starting with the player who first bought a card, you're going to shuffle these guys up randomly and then take these bought cards and place them on the top of each player who bought a card. If a player didn't buy a card, they're not going to get a card. And if a player bought two, they're going to get two cards, which will make sense when you distribute the cards. After that, you'll move on to the next phase, which is basically the first phase once again, drawing those five cards up from your deck, one, two, three, four, and five, putting out a new monster and continuing play. And of course, you may or may not get the card that you bought. And in this case, you don't. So in this case, you get Seeker of Ends, which means when you play all these cards out, this one will let you draw two cards from your deck, which means you'll have to take your discard pile and shuffle it back up and then deal out two more cards. And then you'll simply continue play just like that. Whenever you utilize somebody else's card at the end of your turn, when you go to discard it, it's actually going to go into your opponent's discard pile, the owner of the card, which is the owner of the guild of that card, whereas the rest of yours will go into your discard pile. And the same can be said for any other player. There's some other unique things you can do in this game as well, other than, of course, just buying cards and playing cards and slaying monsters. You can also go ahead and utilize your guild master power. Once per game, you can go ahead and trigger this effect and when you utilize it, you'll flip it face down. Another thing you can do is barter with players. You can trade with each other player at any time as long as one of them is in the middle phase of their turn. Um, also to note too, whenever you play a card with an ability, you'll simply utilize that ability when it is played. And the game will end when somebody gathers enough points in their discard pile to equal the total points required or if everybody is limited from the game because there is too many monsters out on the field, in which case everyone is removed from play and the game is over. That's the basic classical mode of the game. It'll continue where you're going to be drawing cards, adding new cards to your guild area. You'll be able to refresh these and discard these and draw them and put them on top of your deck, etc., etc. And then, of course, the last little thing is when you do purchase a card for the cost plus two, like I said, instead of going here, it'll actually go um, into your discard pile. However, when it does go here it'll be shuffled up and then dealt randomly on top of somebody's deck but that's pretty much the idea for the game war rift let's come up and discuss my feelings of this deck building game and whether or not you should pick it up so let's go ahead and discuss the game uh, first thing i want to talk about is the fact that there are unique guilds in this game and each guild has its own unique style of play so if you're going to be playing with the spell strike guild then you're going to be utilizing the cards with a blue border and these cards will do unique things that other decks 
do not. Drawing the top and bottom card of your deck as opposed to maybe drawing the top two cards. You can choose an iron or bronze card in a discard pile and put it into the rift, which is actually rather nice. Iron and bronze will be in reference to the rank. There are ranks of cards, meaning that you have rank one, which is the deck cards that you start with, then two and three, and finally the godlike cards four. Uh, you also can do stuff like, I don't know, you may have each player put the bottom card of their guild into the Rift, uh, which basically allows more cards to be generated into uh, the player's top of the deck. Uh, you have some cards that will give you not only value in currency, but also in attack power. And this one here says that you may have each player put the top, uh, the bottom card of their guild into the Rift, and etc, etc. Uh, some cards will be using the ability to consume other cards, meaning remove them from the deck to basically postulate and form the best possible deck you have. You also have the ability to trade with other players, which is a unique little trade-off in the game, or a unique little stylization of the game, in which you can go ahead and trade cards. Now, it doesn't specify exactly how it works, but I imagine if you want, you could trade one for one, as long as that player is in the middle of their phase, and though when you do play one of somebody else's cards, you'll have to give that back to them. So if you really want to draw an extra card or two, you can say, oh, if you have an extra draw card, I'll give you this card, which would be beneficial, because the reason why you're going to want to do that is that there are these creatures in the maw. And yes, you do want to have more points than anybody else, but let's say that the requirement is to be less than nine and you're at maybe you've you were at eight you're halfway through you put down two more cards in the mob because you're so close to winning and now you're going to lose uh which is great for other players they want you to lose they want to win the game however if everybody's still not really close to winning and you lose by not being able to defeat monsters the next player is going to come up and realize that they now have 10 monsters plus the one they have to put into play making it 11 uh to deal with they have to get down to nine and they might not be able to do that which means that they have to kind of work together even if they don't necessarily want to which is a really cool aspect to the game. Uh, not only that, but when you play with a, a, the Demon Master player, uh, the rules are basically written just on the card alone here. On your turn, you can choose two different modes and it'll let you decide what you wanna do, whether you want to have players uh, not trade this rotation, players choose to consume their deck or discard player uh, pile, uh, put another monster into play from the Maw, etc., etc. The Demon Master is attempting to try and make the other player suffer to the point where they are removed from the game or eliminated from the game. And uh, it's a player that's basically going to be mean as opposed to being nice to the players. Uh, they're against that player. All of them technically are working together as the guilds are trying to compete for supremacy, but also uh, not allowing the Maw to consume the world because in that case no one gets to reign supreme. Uh, power is only important if you have somebody to control, right? Um, that being said though, it is a basic style deck builder in the sense that you are playing your five cards cards, you are gathering the cards in front of you to put them to your discard pile or into the rift, and then of course if you get other players' cards you'll discard them and give them back to that player. Now the decks are usually going to function the same because of the fact that you don't get to actually make uh, unique decks with unique players cards there it's more in, in a kind of like a bartering and trade system and randomization system but it's still really rather nice because you can utilize other players cards with your strategy to improve the strategy of your deck while your deck might be basically to consume most of the cards in it and utilize only the best cards uh, there are cards in other players decks that let you draw cards that will formulate that deck into a more powerhouse than it normally would be the powers in your uh, specific guilds are nice, and the fact that they give you additional powers to choose from is also nice. Whether you're playing as, with Scatter Shade, where once per game on your turn you can have each opponent discard a card at random, or if you're playing as the Wraith Blast card, once per game during your turn you can consume up to two cards in your discard pile, removing them from the game, which is good because it essentially makes your deck better if there's cards in there that you do not want to utilize. Monsters from the Maw are also rather interesting as well. When they pop out, most of the time they're not going to do anything. You have to deal with things like this uh, Lava dragon here. It's got uh, four victory points, but seven health, which means it's rather hard to deal with. Uh, they have certain tiers on them, just like you would imagine other cards do. And other cards in your deck may uh, facilitate in, in defeating these monsters. Some will say, like, defeat a bronze monster or a silver monster, etc., etc. Uh, some of them are rather <laughs> rather ridiculous to beat, like uh, Uva, the Black Mist. It's got 16 health, but it gives you eight victory points. And when it death crashes, each player consumes their deck and a discard pile. Wow, that's 
that's rather nasty. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, some of them are easy to deal with. There's certain variants in the game that you can choose to have the weaker monsters start in the game to make it more fair for the other players. Uh, you can choose to have a larger amount of monsters be on the field, a lesser amount of monsters. There's a ton of game variety and variability in the game. Uh, there's also a solo player mode in the game, which you can play. Basically, you're just going to be competing against the mod deck, attempting to defeat it before it's too late. And of course, the, what I didn't show you is the two other guilds, which is the Soul Guard and the Spell Strike. Uh, the Soul Guard is yellow and the Spell Strike is blue. But I did talk about all the cards in the Spell Strike deck. If you like deck builders, if you like interactive ones that involve trading, if you like a game that has a one versus many feature where somebody can play as the Dungeon Master, and if you like a game with great artwork, you're going to enjoy this game. I really, really, really like the artwork in this game. I think it is phenomenal. Top-notch, beautiful illustrations. The cards are really easy to understand. This is a deck builder that's very, very straightforward. This card has this much health. It requires uh, this much damage, and when it dies, this happens. Or this card can be bought for this much money. Uh, when you buy it, it's either going to go here or here. And when you draw it, you can use it to gather this much money or this much damage. If it hits the play, it will do something interesting. Uh, there's only a certain number of key terms, but you can find them all in the back of the book. I think there's just one large, and the rules are really big. It's not actually really a complicated game. But there's a lot of uh, space, making it really easy to read and understand. Uh, you can sit down and read the rules for this game and understand how to play it within maybe 10 minutes if you're a slow reader, because uh, it's very, very straightforward. I love deck builder games. Uh, this one here is going to stay in my collection. It's probably one of my favorite uh, deck building games uh, currently as of this year, and it has a ton of potential. There's a ton of more things can be added, like different guilds and whatnot. I'd love to see some way in which you can keep cards uh, in your deck. I know that's not really possible based on the rules. Maybe they can add a variant in which you can kind of formulate your own deck based on how players choose to buy their cards and put them into the rift. Uh, the fact that the monsters are out there and you have to kind of work together to deal with them and, and and also not deal with them at the same time, allowing other players to get eliminated. There's a ton of different choice. Uh, overall, it's it's a very, satis a very satisfying game. It has a ton of replayability, and the fact that you can choose between all the guilds is, is, is phenomenal. Uh, there are a couple small things that uh, I, I can say, I suppose, that are negatives. Uh, one, like I said before, is when you play as a specific guild, most likely for the most, time, most point in time, you're going to be playing with a specific single strategy uh, because that guild has a very unique stylization to it, and and uh, it's gonna, you're going to be able to change it a little bit, but eventually it's going to come back full circle to where you're utilizing that. Sometimes the Maw is going to present you with monsters you cannot deal with, whereas on other players' turns, the Maw might drop something that's rather weak and rather easy to deal with, giving them points. And of course, uh, some decks function differently than others. Uh, ones, some are a little faster, but do a little less damage. Others are slower, but do a ton of damage. And so you'll have to kind of base your play style on those different types of decks and cards uh, but otherwise though the game is looks fully finished looks beautiful the cards are really great it feels great it's very simple to understand if you like deck builders if you like competitive semi-cooperative games you're going to enjoy the game war rift it's something i would recommend for you to take a look at link down below in the description i had a ton of fun with this one Thank you guys so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game War Rift. If you're interested, like I said below, is the link in the description. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button. It does greatly help us out here and we do appreciate it. It helps with the algorithm too when you push that button so you can see more of our videos. Whenever we create a view review video, if it's something you're interested in, click it, give it a look. If it's something you're not, that's okay as well. I just appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel and taking a look. It keeps us doing more stuff like this, as well as, of course, taking a look at my wife's game, Moonshell, a mermaid game. It's coming down to the wire now. We're about ready to make a splash with this mermaid-based game where you're going to be collecting seashells from a board. The board's going to rotate, and you're going to be attempting to gather shells from that board, putting them onto the rock spaces next to them, and then eventually putting them onto your player board to collect the magical shells uh, to complete competitively open and, of course, secret objectives. However, as the most points by the time somebody fills their board after a full round will be the winner of the game. Utilize mermaids with specific unique mermaid powers and our unique signature, Mermeeple, where you'll be 
be placing mermaids out onto other players' boards or onto the main board or onto your own board. Uh, there's a ton of great stuff, some great expansive stuff that I'd like to get out, and hopefully if the campaign does really well, we'll be able to do everything we'd like to do with the game and show you how beautiful it is. I think it's a wonderful looking game. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. You can also go ahead and join us on Discord to see more information about this kind of stuff, as well as things like our painting competitions, our live streams, uh, be notified by all that. Thank you so much, Patreons, for supporting us, supporting our streams, supporting our videos. Every month it does help us out by sending out games to you guys so we can afford the shipping, and that's currently what it's being used for right now. But regardless, I do really, really appreciate it. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to entering the war rift with you next time.